guys. Just wanted to welcome you guys to the um, to this. We're going to be talking about 32 tips for making better video, getting results for and getting results for your business. Now, uh, I have the privilege to get on here with a good friend of mine, uh, Mike Stewart. And many of you guys may or may not know of Mike, uh, but but I'm just going to tell you he has been you know his legacy has actually allowed uh, for many of the things we're using doing today in audio and video to be even um, even happen. And the reason I bring that up is because Mike um, is, you know, his background or his, not only his background, but a lot of people, he got the, his nickname on the internet is the Internet Audio Guy. Not only that, the Internet Video Guy. And a lot of things early on in this business were created. Actually, I think he was one of the first people to actually tell um, a lot of the direct response marketers or the copywriters to say, hey, look, you know those long sales letters you're creating? Well, why don't you actually turn it into videos? And um, he was able to, I mean, he was uh, to be able to make that happen. But but Mike's have has a, a, a huge background in uh, creating audio, creating video, and we're here today to share with you um, some really you know amazing tips. And I'll tell you, even though we say 32 tips, you're going to get a lot more out of it. So pay close attention uh, to what we're uh, what we're going to be talking about here today. Um, you know, on this. So Mike, why don't you give him a little bit of your background better than I? I know you can give a better background than I did. <laughs> Well, Matt, thank you for inviting me to, to help create these 32 tips, which it, it will be a lot more than 32. But my background uh, is I came to Atlanta, Georgia, which you and I both are uh, uh, living here and, and running our business out of Georgia. Uh, but I started in 1979 with uh, building a recording studio to do sound, what was called sound design for corporate television, um, training videos. Um, uh, television commercials, radio commercials, anything to do with advertising and marketing for radio and television is what I was involved with. I, I started as a uh, as an audio guy, as a sound designer, and a sound designer is a guy who uh, orchestrates video with music, uh, records narrations, uh, knows how to uh, edit, um, and knows how to create professional sounding audio soundtracks for television. And and of course, because of that, I worked for 20 years with some of the best. Uh, video producers and cameramen and uh, filmmakers in in Georgia. Uh, we did national TV shows for A and E, CBS, Showtime. Um, we did a lot of corporate training for Coca Cola, Delta, um, uh, you, you name it. Any anything, uh, uh, the Turner, uh, CNN, the Weather Channel. We did we did work for all of those companies. And one of the things that that came to my attention with all this background in radio and television is that. Uh, I really saw early on that the Internet is a form of radio and television. The ability to broadcast audio and video content to the world has never been more prevalent uh, than today. And I saw that it was coming early on. Uh, and I have to tell, I want to tell the story real quick. Um, years ago, I'm a big fan of late night television, and I've been watching the David Letterman show for 30 years uh, since he started. And in 1998, he had Bill Gates on his television show. Uh, and Dave came out with the question to Bill Gates of Microsoft. He said, what's the deal with this Internet thing? And I thought, you know, of all the answers he could give, uh, this was the first thing out of Bill Gates' mouth. He said, you know, you'll be able to listen to the radio on your computer because of the Internet. And then, of course, Dave, being the smart aleck that he is, he said, well, why don't you just listen to the radio on your radio? And everybody laughed. But it really clicked with me that night. And this is probably from, well, 98, somewhere in there that this show was on. So it's been over uh, 25 years ago. And I thought, oh my gosh, the internet is radio and television. And that's why I pursued the internet because I realized that the future of radio and television production, which is what I've been a part of all my life, and I'm passionate about all the elements of it, uh, now the internet lets anyone broadcast audio and video to the world. Um, I, w I was privileged enough uh, 25, 30 years ago to do a project for Ted Turner. And he walked into the studio that night excited that uh, uh, WTBS, the, the uh, super station here in Atlanta, had a reach of 7 million people. That didn't mean 7 million people were watching. He was excited that his television station could get in 7 million homes if they chose to tune it in. Well, the Internet gets in 7 billion plus homes for everybody. So that if the Internet is television and radio, what these tips are about, how you can, with very simple, affordable tools, be able to do what Ted Turner was excited about 30 years ago. 
And so my background has been extensively doing all this production work for years, been in the music business. Um, you know, we'll be talking probably at some point about my history in the record business and having a band that had a hit record in 81, and we'll talk about that some more. But I think we need to get into the meat of these tips of why you as an information marketer or an entrepreneur or a business owner, you need to be making video for your business, and then we're going to give you these 32 tips of how you cannot have to go through the school of hard knocks. You can know exactly just by watching this video and this presentation to know what are things that you need to be thinking about that will empower you to make the television and the radio uh, and, and the audio that can get you better results for your business no matter what it is. So you ready to get started, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. Well, here is tip number one. There are two types of video that work on the Internet. And uh, you're probably asking, uh, why aren't you doing camera video for this uh, presentation? Well, it's because when it comes to teaching and when it comes to demonstration and in really pretty much any type of video presentation you want to make, slideshow, um, uh, bullet points, images, still images. You're looking at bullet points and still images right now. That is called screen capture video. And on a PC, we're using a program right now to capture the screen of my computer. And then Matt and I are talking over Skype. I'm recording his audio on my end because we both have microphones and we're connecting that audio. And Camtasia captures all of that in real time. That's how we're making the screen capture video. But there's another type of video that's made with a, uh, the lens of a camera. And that lens of the camera can be a camcorder, or you can see there it can actually be, and the way I'm teaching these days, which didn't exist when I started, the cameras in smartphones, especially the iPhone, are so incredibly great quality and amazingly easy to use that the way to make business video uh, with a camera is with a smartphone or an iPad. And so those are the two types of videos. So number one tip, um, the easier way to get started is screen capture. Because one, you don't have to look at the camera. You don't have to think about eye contact. You don't have to comb your hair. You don't have to put on a nice clean shirt. I mean, you basically can get in front of the microphone and not have to worry about how you look. But when you're doing um, camera video, then you got to think about things like lighting, good sound, uh, you know, and, and framing the shot and things we're going to talk about in tips. So which is best? Well, the answer is they're both best. But the reason we have Camtasia first, start with screen capture to get your feet wet with making online video and then know that making camera video and what more importantly is called talking head video are the next steps. Any comments, Matt? Yeah. No, I think uh, I mean, the one big thing is just like you guys are seeing right now, this would be considered a screen capture video. And, you know, like you said, we're using Camtasia to record it. Um, you know, we could, you know, you could do uh, what I call a hybrid where you're using both, where it's, you know, you might start off with a talking head where you're using a camera video and then you can actually later on we'll talk about, you know, how to do it or, well, the there's software out there you can use to, to edit videos. But, and you can actually do it inside um, Camtasia, but you can actually inject the talking head and um, screen capture all together as one. So you can actually, you know, also create what what I would consider a hybrid of it. So you're not just one, but the other. But a lot of times, whenever I'm creating, um, you know, training, especially information trainings on, you know, how to do things on the internet, um, I use screen capture. Um, Sometimes, a lot of times, even with the sales videos that I'm doing, um, I use screen capture. Or some, you know, there are times when I am using uh, the camera, and a lot of times when I'm using the camera, just to be clear, camera I use a, little, a lot of times to create relationships, or you know, you know kind of just really talking to my audience. Um, and when I'm selling or creating products, most of the time I'm using uh, screen capture, uh, you know, video for that. So I just want to kind of inject that in there uh, for you know, especially talking about this particular thing. Absolutely. So, but one of the things that no matter what kind of video you make, the things that you need to be aware of are, number one, there is a format called MP4, MPEG4 or MP4. That is the video format that works everywhere. And the type of video player, because see, in other words, to make video work on the Internet, you have to have something called a video player. In other words, if you had a DVD, you would have to put a DVD which is the video in a DVD player. Well, when it comes to the Internet, 
make sure that when you make video, and Camtasia does this for you, and uh, the iPhone and uh, all the different types of video services out there, they make web-compatible MPEG-4 video files. That's the only format that you really need to make sure that you uh, have a grasp of. Uh, and then, of course, the player that works on all devices, meaning uh, computers, laptops, tablets, and cell phones, is what's called an HTML5 player. Because when I saw video really explode for the Internet, it was because of a technology called Flash. And I, everybody loved what Flash did for video and the Internet. However, it's, it's about a 10- or 12-year-old technology, and it's, uh, its time has really come to an end, sadly. Uh, and, and in fact, there is an article on the Internet by Steve Jobs. I, I can remember when Steve Jobs announced that the iPhone would not work with Flash. And it infuriated a lot of web designers and people who were doing using Flash video, which is, a, is an Adobe technology, still prevalent on the Internet today. However, uh, Steve Jobs wrote this article why he would never allow Flash to work on any of his devices. And Google with Android followed suit. Uh, Flash does not work on tablets and cell phones. Uh, it still works on computers, but it doesn't work on all these mobile devices. And as we'll see here in a moment, the Internet has definitely gone mobile. And you really want to make sure that you're mobile compatible. So the way to do that is make sure, tip number two, that you always know that your software or your service makes the proper kind of MPEG-4 file and that when you put it on the Internet that you're using what's called an HTML5 video player. And there's all kinds of ways of doing that. Uh, it's re really easy to search in Google. But those are the two technologies that, that you want to make sure that if you're working with a web person or you're learning to do it yourself, that's what you want to ultimately make it happen. So tip number two is MPEG-4 files and HTML5 players. Yeah, a few years ago, I mean, well, actually, even a few years ago, I mean, the most prevalent one out there was what's called an FLV file. That's where a lot of people are using. I know a lot of my stuff was FLV. We had to convert everything over to MP4, um, you know, just because of the issues. And so um, I'll just tell you, if you open, if you, if you get somebody, somebody's talking about, hey, you know, FLV stuff, it's probably going to be a little outdated. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, in you know when especially when it comes to video, I know now we've converted everything over. Uh, we had to actually so a lot of my older stuff out there. Right, right, exactly. Then we kind of alluded to it in the in the in the last tip, but when you're putting video online, you want what's called responsive websites and response and HTML5 video players generally are responsive. Now let me tell you what that means. A responsive website and a responsive video player responds to the device that is receiving the website and playing the video. So in other words, you're looking at a, uh, a test website of mine, which you're welcome to go look at. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of a sandbox where I test things. It's not real, a real website. It's called ICanDoVideo.com. Uh, and the, you can see the website, the left screenshot is what the web, uh, web page looks like on a tablet or what it looks like on a computer and the video will play on the computer and it'll play on the tablet but when you go to the exact same page on a cell phone that right screenshot is actually taken from my iPhone you can see the the page conforms itself the menu everything and even the player shrinks to fit the size of the screen of the cell phone and that's what a responsive website is so when you are building video for online, make sure that you are mobile compatible. And the easiest, fastest way to be mobile compatible is have what's called a responsive website. And one of the things that uh, a technology called a technology called WordPress, um, which is a content management blogging software, which we could spend a whole another 50 tips on WordPress. WordPress. Uh, automatically has the ability to be responsive. So what you're looking at is a WordPress responsive website with a responsive video player and what that does it makes the video and the website compatible on computers, tablets, smartphones and the videos play on all devices. And that tip right there, you know, I don't know Matt how many businesses I see one don't have a video for their web, for their business but if they do have a video for their business it's not responsive and it won't work on the cell phones or tablets that's a missed opportunity never ever put up video content that's not viewable and usable on all devices 
Yeah, and I'll tell you one thing. I was at my doctor's office just the other day, and they said majority of all their clients that come in literally book um, online, um, and they're using their cell phones and their iPhones or whatever, but they're using their mobile devices uh, to come into his office. So, I mean, that's something that's why it's really important, um, you know, because most that's what people are doing these days is getting on and using, you know, mobile, you know, where it's, you know, mobile device. Uh, they're using a mobile device to, especially even with bricks, a lot of bricks and mortar stuff. Oh, yeah. The, the connection to the internet through cell phones and tablets is just uh, uh, just growing at an, at an amazing rate. And more importantly, one of the statistics that, that Google has shared with us is that, uh, especially like your, uh, your uh, doctor's office, 96% um, of the search in Google on, on mobile devices are for local businesses. So uh, there is a massive opportunity for brick and mortar businesses to get mobile compatible. But even as an information marketer such as you and I, uh, Matt, being mobile compatible is is Im imperative too, because the internet is in everybody's hands 24/7, and they're not going back to their computer to search Google or to find you or to look at your information. They're actually viewing it uh, uh, while they're uh, doing something else, or or they're on a subway or a bus, or or they're being driven in a carpool. They're searching on their cell phones, communicating and buying and making buying decisions on their mobile devices. So uh, I can't stress this enough. Now, like we talked about uh, uh, in the first tip, um, it's very important uh, to, uh, and uh, the tip here is use talking head video when you get comfortable talking to the lens of a camera. And that lens of a camera can be a camcorder or it can be a cell phone or an iPad or a tablet because cameras are now uh, available everywhere. <coughs> and so, one of the things that I've seen businesses and business owners and individuals struggle with is being comfortable talking to the camera. And that is a skill and that is a tip. Uh, use talking head video to build the relationship. When you look down the tunnel of a lens of a camera, it's like looking in the eyes of your prospect so that you can build a likability factor, a trust factor, and a, a knowing factor. So basically, it's like somebody says, I'm interested in knowing who you are, and when you look into the lens of a camera, you are virtually, electronically building a relationship on the Internet while you're doing something else. So uh, the tip here is you get comfortable using talking head video, meaning uh, get some sort of camera device, and we're going to be um, uh, talking pretty much uh, emphatically about how the iPad is the solution for that. In fact, the video you're looking at right there uh, is a coaching client of mine, and that video was shot here in my home studio uh, with my iPad. The color looks great. The, the sound is great. And, in fact, what happens is he drives traffic to this law firm website, and the, you can see the call to action and text. Watch this video to meet attorney Justin D. Williams. Okay. How else can you meet somebody at a website other than video? You can't meet people in text. You can't meet people in still photographs or graphics. You can meet people with video. In fact, being, by me doing talking head video for years, I've had people come up to me at seminars or call me on the phone or talk to me and said, you know, I've been watching your videos. You look like somebody who knows what he's doing. You look like somebody I can trust. I feel like I know you. There is no other content that you can put on the Internet other than talking head video that can build a relationship with a stranger while you sleep like vi talking head video can. And, and I've just seen, the re I've seen people come up to me at seminars, even some of Matt's events. Mike, I, I, I'm so glad to finally meet you. I feel like I know you. How else could they feel and say those kind of things had I not been willing to get in front of some camera, look at the tunnel, you know, look at the lens of that camera, and talk to people? That's why they call it talking head. It's, it's not a, a, a back, pullback shot where you're seeing somebody uh, standing from head to toe. You're, you can look at the shot, which we're looking at right there. It's from about mid-waist up. And it's look, you know, you're not showing the whole body. You're just showing enough of the body for body language, facial expressions, and things that can build 
uh, credibility, trust, and what we always want on the Internet is the no like, and tr trust factor to get people to do the call to action. And the call to action with his lawyers, call, you know, how easy is it to find his phone number? I mean, one, uh, that's a tip right there. If, you're, if you want phone calls as the call to action to your business, don't make it hard for people to find the phone number. Put it on every page. Anyway, any comments? No, I think I mean the big thing is is you know just like you talked about I mean it's really and I alluded to that in I think one of the one of the tips earlier is the fact that it's a great way to build a lot of relationships, build a lot of rapport. They can see who the heck they're about to deal with or who they're dealing with. Um, you know, and the same thing you said. You know, I've shown up. People can walk up to me like, man, I saw. You know, I found this YouTube video about you. You know, everything else. Um, you know, and that's how they know us. Um, you know, and and they feel like they know you. They've known you for a long time. Kind of just reiterating what you said, but but it's true. And that's one thing. Uh, you know, when it comes to, comes to doing it, just like he said, the big point to say is when you're ready for it, start doing it, uh, because you'll find that more and more people will have more rapport with you than just some rapport with a PowerPoint. Right, and and, and the label that I've called this, uh, a, a television host like uh, here in America, The Tonight Show, and Jimmy Fallon. Very, very popular show. Uh, millions of people know what Jimmy looks and sounds like. And um, um, they know what he looks and sounds like, and he's a celebrity because of television. If he, if he walked down the street, I would recognize him because he's a celebrity. What web pages and video will do is create what I call niche celebrity, and that's what you want. You want your market and your audience to look to you as an expert that they know, like, and trust. Because when that happens, then that can result in business that, that makes you money. Now, if you noticed uh, what we did with the iPad and the camera, uh, one of the biggest problems I see people not thinking about, and this is a tip, is not a t you don't want to mess up framing the shot properly. Uh, you don't want to be so far from the camera that they can't see your eyes and your face. That's why the talking head framed shot, which you're looking at, and in fact, I'm showing you my iPad there. I took a picture with my iPhone of me framing the shot of me talking to my iPad, making a video sales message. Um, and then you can see the results um, of what the shot looks like after I've produced the video. And, um, and so tip number five is just... Make sure that when you frame the shot that you think about what, what um, content you're going to be putting up there. If you're relationship building, center yourself. You can see there I'm from, uh, I can maybe move back a little bit and got a little bit more of my torso, but that to me is a good frame shot where I've got uh, most of my face in the camera. It's centered in the frame of the camera, and there's things on either side. And in fact, if you look at me in the red shirt there, if you look to the right of my head, uh, this is a little tip in framing the shot. I strategically put my gold record, which is a real gold record that I earned uh, in 1981 for a hit song called Pac-Man Fever. You can go to Wikipedia and look up uh, Buckner and Garcia, Pac-Man Fever, and you'll see that I was in the band. And uh, I've been proud of that award since 1981. And one of the things that, uh, that happened when I hung my gold record, behind me in my talking head videos, uh, my sales went up, uh, my credibility went up. So that's a little tip. Um, one of the things is in your office or wherever it is that you're going to get uh, comfortable making talking head videos, hang awards behind you. Um, you know, have a bookcase. Um, you know, think about what the background people will see when, you know, their focal point is hearing you talk about your expertise. But that background is a subliminal message, and you know a gold record has the subliminal message of credibility, success, um, uh, national success, national prominence. I mean, it's saying things on a subliminal level that give uh, give lend credibility to me that uh, that is true. And uh, you'd be amazed how many people will email me or say, "Do you really have a gold record?" And I say, "Absolutely." It actually will create a conversation. And, uh, and it impresses folks. So if you've got diplomas or uh, uh, significant awards, if you're a, a, a certified speaker, hang those things behind you, and they can become great backgrounds for your framing your shot of your talking head video. Matt? Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's, I mean, that's a really good point. And, you know, kind of just a side note, I mean, uh, 
not not only I mean that that actual song that you did with Pac-Man Fever. I know we don't want to get in the whole whole thing in it, but Buckner Garcia and the stuff that you did. I mean, I know you guys just got picked up and you did something cool, which I meant to say actually earlier in your introduction, but you guys just did the Disney movie Wreck It for Ralph. Well, absolutely. I mean, if Jerry and I weren't doing um, uh, video websites and audio websites and populating the internet with information about our old band. Uh, we wouldn't have had the, the uh, honor and pleasure of the Disney Corporation contacting us because we made it real easy to find us. I mean, if you go into Google and you put in Pac-Man Fever, you're going to find us. And when you find our website, you're going to find contact information. And Disney called up and said, hey, we have this movie, Wreck It, Wreck It, Ralph. Uh, you guys did a song about Pac-Man 30 years ago. This movie's about 80s, pa uh, 80s video games. Would you consider doing the theme song to Wreck It, Wreck It, Ralph? And, I mean, what a joy that was that uh, in the movie, an Academy Award-winning movie, the Internet helped Hollywood find a couple of guys uh, that 30 years ago had some success, and then that success turned into some more business and some more credibility. Um, you know, it's amazing uh, what's possible because, you know, there's a good shot. Had it been the technology of the 80s, they would have just said, oh, we can't find these guys, forget it. But because they were able to go to Google, find us, call us, and, I mean, it was funny. They called us in August of 2012, and they said, great, we need it in two weeks. <laughs> we need the song in two weeks. So wow. from, from a phone call to the movie, we created uh, and recorded. In fact, we recorded the song uh, at home on our computers and sent our, uh, our parts to Los Angeles through the Internet, and now it's part of the movie uh, worldwide. So it's, it's an exciting story what, you know, what this technology can do for you. You never know. And that kind of goes, really leads into music. Uh, you know, I'm still passionate about the music business. Uh, I've had success in it, uh, uh, and I have more success with music um, for Internet marketing. And the reason I show you this slide is that one of the things that we'll be talking about extensively uh, uh, at, towards the end of this uh, presentation is you know using music, using YouTube, using social media uh, with your video to generate uh, buzz, generate uh, clicks to your website. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, I, it's amazing how many businesses don't utilize YouTube because YouTube is just an amazingly powerful social media website that has so many repurposing opportunities that um, uh, it's, it's just crazy that you don't have, you know, uh, businesses after business I meet have no YouTube channel or no YouTube presence at all. Uh, but one of the things is, is music makes video more professional. When you underscore, I've known this since the beginning of working in the television industry, uh, music is, is part of the um, secret sauce that makes it more television-like and less home movie-like. Uh, when you underscore a video with music, it just automatically takes on a professionalism that it doesn't without music. And that's why you see on the news, I mean, think about any news television program. Uh, they come in with news, they transition out of news, television shows, uh, uh, everything uses music to underscore and create emotions and create uh, uh, comprehension and connectivity with the audience. However, the tip here is uh, you got to use legal music. Not using legal music is a huge mistake. And you can see that if in YouTube, if you use music, you do not have the rights to use. And that means pretty much any commercial popular song by any artist that was, that, you know, was released commercially. If you use that music in your video, you run the risk of that video being blocked without any control of you, or even worse, your whole YouTube channel being deleted. I've seen that happen to people who had too many strikes against them. So always use legal music. And, of course, um, um, you know, we're going to give you resources where you can get legal music. The easiest way to find legal music is search Google for royalty-free music. Uh, that's the way. Make sure you have the uh, legal license that allows you to prove you have the rights to use that music in your videos, whether they're on your websites or in social media. All right?
Yeah, and and believe me, I mean, even to the point of I don't know if you knew this, Mike. One time, but this was years ago. We do webinars now, which is video, you know, stuff over the internet. But um, I remember when I was doing a teleseminar, I started it off and had the Rocky music on there. And actually, uh, this was years ago, and somebody contacted me and was like, "Hey, uh, you're really not supposed to be using that music <laughs> at the beginning of your, you know, I don't care where you're doing it. Or, you know, you need to pay uh, for it or quit using it." I'm like, "Oh no, I, I'll quit using it." <laughs> so, um, so just. I mean, it is a big thing. You don't even know where. I mean, you would think, oh, nobody's going to figure it out. I, mean, I was on a, you know, a webinar or actually a teleseminar back then, but, you know, I mean, you never know uh, what could happen. So you want to be very, very careful when you are using it. And like you said, the key phrase is royalty-free music, um, you know, to is what you want to use if you're not composing or creating it yourself. Yes. If you create the music yourself or you have – Composers who are friends to create it, you're you know, home free because you have proof. And then, of course, uh, there are resources. In fact, that's one of the biggest businesses that I have right now uh, because I still create music um, for people who do podcasts, teleseminars. Uh, in fact, we had a great time creating a piece of original music for, for Matt's messy desk uh, one yeah. night. Yeah. And so uh, there, there are, there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it, and you can see the consequences if you break the rules. So don't break the rules. Use legal music. Yeah, absolutely. Now, <clears throat> once again, like I said, I'm amazed at how many people don't utilize the, the traffic and relationship-building opportunity of YouTube. YouTube is the new television network of the world. YouTube is the new radio station of the world. And amazingly, people go to YouTube and search for tutorial videos. And, and uh, when a video really gets a lot of searches, sometimes the thumbnail of that video can take up the whole page of real Google. Uh, it's a thing that uh, Google introduced a few months ago that a popular video, in other words, if you searched in Google how to clean dust from a computer, there's a possibility that the thumbnail of this video right here would take up the whole page of Google. Uh, it's all based on if it's a popular video, and Google wants people watching YouTube videos because they monetize it with commercials. They, you know, they're a bigger television network than all the other networks combined. But here's something that Google doesn't penalize you. It's called using lower third text. And in television, the reason we call it lower third text is it was a way to let people to know uh, the editor, the video producer and editor, know that that's where we're putting the text. You would divide the screen into thirds, upper third, middle third, and lower third. And you'd say, hey, put this title in the upper third, or put this title in the middle third. Or, but most commonly, and you see it on CNN, you see it on uh, news networks, you see it in commercials and infomercials, text that people can read in the lower third of the screen of the television set. Now, you, here's a video that this guy produced, and he had almost 60, over 69,000 views, but he didn't put any lower third contact information in his video. He didn't put anything in his, and we're going to go into details about this, but he had no contact information to share with anybody. So even though people were sh watching this video, sharing this video, nobody knows who in the world did it. There's no way to contact him because he did not put information in his lower third. And here's the other reason why you want to put it in the lower third. A lot of times videos are not viewed on YouTube. People will click the share button in YouTube and post that video on their website or blog. In other words, they see your video, and let's say that it's a high a computer repair uh, national business, and they posted this video on their blog. Well, if you don't put lower third text then nobody knows who it is because it's on a different website. So always add lower third text. Let me show you the example of one of my coaching clients who has learned this tip. You can see there he's doing a talking head video. If you notice, he has all his awards hanging behind him, uh, all the same things I told you about. But he put his name and his web address in the lower third, and that's what editing software on the iPad and in most all video editing programs, they will allow you to put lower third verbiage in the lower third of the screen. So now what happens is, is now that's in part of the video, it's embedded in the video, and in fact with YouTube, you can actually put a hotspot over that that is clickable uh, no matter where that video goes to, to your website. Um, so there, there's so many reasons for adding lower third text 
uh, in your YouTube videos. And, um, and then, of course, you know, one of the other things is um, um, you always want to put your web address in the lower third. And I'll tell you why. I had a client years ago tell me, you know, I'm number one in Google for my web address. And, you know, I didn't want to laugh at the gentleman because he <laughs> thought that was important. But you better be number one in Google for your web address. And here's what people will do. They will see that web address right there uh, in the lower third of the text where that video is playing, and they will type that web address in Google. They don't know that they could put it up here, what's called the address bar. Mo a lot of people just don't know that. They will take your web address, like his, pestcontrolmarketer.com, and they will type that .com address in Google. Well, guess who's number one in the world for his web address? Yeah. This gentleman here. So that's why putting visual web addresses and clickable web addresses everywhere you can can increase verifiable clicks to your website. And wh that's what we all want. We want traffic to our websites. Don't ever leave out lower third text on any video you put up in social media. Yeah, and just, I mean, the big point is, too, is a lot of people forget to do it. It's pretty easy to do, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But the, but the fact of the matter is, too, is... Yeah, and a big point that he made is, you know, even though you put it on YouTube, doesn't mean it's just going to be on YouTube. Because you put it on YouTube, you know, I found YouTube videos and I've shared it with my Facebook group. I've found, and, and it shows up there inside the Facebook group. You would never, most people aren't going back to the, um, you know, the original page or the YouTube page where it was at. They're actually getting it. They're watching it inside that Facebook channel, or they're, you know, the, there's different things. People are taking it and embedding it on their pages and and, and different things like that. A lot of people aren't clicking back. Um, you know, to the page if, if maybe you had it down in the description. But the fact of the matter is, why make somebody work that hard if you want to get business? I mean, uh, like he was talking about, you know, putting your web address in there, putting your phone number, or however, whatever that call to action you want them to take, you know, have that in the page because you never know where your video is going to end up. Absolutely. In fact, one of the things that uh, Facebook does when you uh, share a video on Facebook, it actually plays in the news feed of Facebook. You don't leave Facebook, Facebook doesn't want you to leave. So they're going to make that YouTube video play inside of Facebook. That's why lower third text comes with it, so that people can see how to get in touch with you. And if they like you, trust you, they may contact. Well, in fact, uh, I'll give you one little statistic here from Hal. Hal told me he's number one in the world for pest control marketing. I, I, I dare you to go somewhere in the world and type in pest control marketing in Google. You will, not, not, you will find Hal Coleman. And he tells me, that 99% of his business starts off this way. The phone rings because that's his call to action. Call me and let me do work with you. Let me consult you. Let me sell you my products. The phone rings says, I've been watching one of your videos and I'm ready to do business. He said 99% uh, of his business is now coming from the 100 plus videos he's put into YouTube. And you know, it, it's because he makes videos that are good. People love, it's the social media that people want to share and those lower third texts are the reason people can find his website. When they come to his website, they know how to get in touch with him. Absolutely. Now, number eight, um, this is one of the biggest questions that I get from coaching clients and I get from my uh, local business customers and my internet, you know, my students and everybody I work with. You know, I struggle with what to say. You know, I'd make more videos, but I don't know what videos to make. And, and I tell people right up front, um, if you can't make a video off the top of your head, uh, I know Matt's talented like that. You, you could give Matt a subject, and he could shoot. He could knock out a video. And and I've been fortunate enough that I could do the same thing. But I know people struggle with that. So when you're getting started, what they use in television is cue cards and teleprompters, and there are solutions for that. And you go, well, okay, Mike, that's great. I got a teleprompter uh, a pr program. I've got Post-it notes. Uh, I can make cue cards but I still struggle with what to say. Well, it's real easy. If, you're, if you have a product or service, think of the problems your product or service solves. You know, in other words, welcome to my video. I know you have this problem. Let me tell you how my product or service can solve that. So if you just wrote down the problems that your product or service or expertise solved, you could probably literally think of, in fact, every time I do that with a coaching student, they go, well, yeah, I, you know, I can think of probably 100 problems that my product or service solves. Okay, well, that's 100 videos. I call them did-you-know videos. So what you do 
is you either can type a script into a teleprompter software and read it while you're recording your video, or you can make bullet points on a post-it note, and that's what I do. I, I make bullet points on a post-it note, stick it to my iPad without covering the lens of the camera, and then I look at the post-it note because in the cue card world, it's all about having whatever information to help you remember to keep your train of thought. In fact, basically these PowerPoint slides are my, Matt and mine's cue cards to keep us on track to create this content. We know the information because this is our passion, but without, uh, you know, if we ha didn't have these slides or cue cards or teleprompter, whatever you want to call it, it'd be hard to keep this on track and in sequence. And so uh, when you're making videos, you can make cue cards, uh, you know, I call it uh, the redneck teleprompter, uh, post-it notes or um, teleprompter software like the Teleprompt Plus app for the iPad. It's a $15 teleprompter app. You type up your script. You can control the speed of it. And uh, with an iPad, you can actually read the teleprompter while you're shooting your talking head video. You can actually pull, it'll pull up your camera so you can frame your shot and you're recording yourself while you're reading the teleprompter. Yeah, I know when I, um, did, you know, before you had that ability, you know, I went out and bought one of those big old teleprompter, you know, teleprompters, and I had to have a, a regular camera behind it, and I used my iPad as the, you know, iPad, and I had a phone on my, use my phone as a remote control, and, you know, it basically looked through the glass, and, uh, you know, I guess it reflected off the glass, and I could read my iPad uh, from there, and that's how I did my talking head, some of my talking head videos, but now you can do it through the iPad. I mean, it's all in one solution, 15 bucks. I think it cost me a thousand dollars to do it the first time. So, you know, the cool thing is, is it's got a lot cheaper for you guys to do it, and I mean, for 15 bucks, I mean, you could have done it my way, went out and, you know, paid, you know, over a thousand dollars and then trying to figure out how to configure the dang thing. Um, but that was a pain in the butt. Um, and then now, you know, you do have that, that ability, uh, to be able to make that happen. So it's really, I mean, I'll just tell you, I mean, and it does help, um, a lot of times I, you know, uh, it, it helps a lot because when you're looking at that, especially doing it the way nobody knows you're actually, you know, reading off or getting cued off, um, uh, cued off from there. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, so anyway, that's how you figure out what to say when you're doing your talking head videos. And, of course, if you're doing screen capture video like we're doing right now, essentially our PowerPoint slides are our cue cards. So l let's, let me tell you one of the things that, that I learned. I've been training audio and video since 2000. I think it's about around the time I met Matt. So that's going on 14 years. As, uh, it was like, if, I, if you recall, I said it was 1998 when I said, oh, my gosh, I want to know how audio and video works on the Internet. And uh, MP3 audio was invented in 1996. So MP3 audio is not even 20 years old yet. And video was in so, so primitive in 96 and 98. But I knew I wanted to learn how video worked. And in, in, all the way back in the history of television, when I used to do it in the 80s and 90s, you know, it required a good camera. And it required editing software. And, you know, even though editing software became cheaper and cheaper, uh, like Sony Vegas Movie Studio and... Uh, a Pinnacle and Adobe Premiere, and then on the Mac there was iMovie. On the Mac computer there was iMovie, and there was Final Cut Pro. There's all kinds of great video editing programs. But now look at the, on the right there. Look at how complex that is. There are thousands of commands. And what I used to hear from people when I coached them on how to use Sony Vegas, because I before the iPad came along, I was a big proponent of learning Sony Vegas. And I would have people say, you know, Okay, I think I've got this. I've got this. And then they wouldn't do it for a couple of weeks, and they'd come back, and they were just overwhelmed. They couldn't remember how to do the editing. And, and one of the things that the, the, I call the definition of home movies versus television, editing video, you know, taking out what's bad and chaining together what's good in a concise, uh, um, really well-thought-out, structured, edited message is the difference between television and home movies. You know, anybody can turn a camera on or turn a, f a cell phone camera on, hit go, you know, not pay attention to framing the shot, not pay attention to lighting, not pay attention to close miking and audio and all the things that are important, and then stop the camera and put it on YouTube. That I call that a home movie. And YouTube is welcomes. I mean, whatever you do with your, you know, with your camera. In fact, there's a lot of funny uh, viral videos that, you know, have been nothing more than turn the camera on and turn the camera off. That's not television. 
That's a home movie. Television is learning to use video editing software. And the reason people failed is the cameras were hard to use and the editing software was even harder. So hard that I know people that spent thousands of dollars on cameras, lights and microphones and editing software wanted to do online video but gave up because it was too hard. Well, once again, tip number 10, editing video is imperative to making better television for the internet or better television period. And in fact, what I loved about the iMovie app for the iPad, not iMovie on a Mac, not a computer program, not a program for an Android tablet or phone, the iPad only, this iMovie $5 app, which you're looking at a screenshot, is far simpler. And I know from the last year and a half of teaching this that w from trying to teach people that hard program right there to this scale down, much easier to use, everything's consolidated into one device. The editor, the camera, the microphone, everything is all in this one device and the quality is just amazing. So once again, tip number 10, you want to be editing video. Not editing video is a big mistake. And if you want to make television, editing is important for the impact of the message. Now, is it the only thing you can do? Absolutely not. Have people been successful without editing? Absolutely. But there's something about being able to do it in, in segments, small little bite-sized chunks, and then chain it together and underscore it with music and put lower third text, all those elements of television can make the difference of a more impactful, more uh, uh, direct responsive message than just turning the camera on and turning the camera off. Any comments? Yeah, I'm just going to, I mean, the, my big thing is, what do you say, it's $15, you know, editing software um, that you're, you know, when you're talking about right here, to be able to make it happen, especially on that. But, I mean, I remember, you know, because it was very complicated when I got started in it, and heck, I mean, I had a full-time person doing it for me, um, you know, doing my audio, and, you know, remember, we went out and bought, I mean, we were trying to, we went out and bought everything, bought a Mac, we did all this stuff to get somebody to do editing, and then we also had somebody on a PC doing editing, uh, it was when we were very, you know, it was, I mean, it was crazy, but now, you know, it's very simple. I'm able to do it on my own too. And I don't, I don't, I'm like a lot of you guys, I'm not a big techie or have an experience like Mike does, but it, it, it becomes, you know, once you do it once, it's really simple to do it again. All right, so we're, now we're to number 11, which is not understanding how to use special effects and, and which ones are important. Now, I'll tell you, probably out of all of these, the ones I've used the most, and I'm going to have Mike talk about you know, the other two, but is, is green screen, and because of Mike uh, teaching me how to do that. But basically, and I know Mike can get into more specifics, but um, you know, have you ever seen it where you know, it's like, how, how in the world is this person, like, you know, all, you know, the backgrounds that people are using, like how did it happen? Like you can see here in this picture over in the upper right-hand side, you see like looks like they're on Mars or the moon or wherever they're at there's a little alien there like how in the world did that happen and the way that that happens is there's a you know you could use uh, you have what's called a green screen behind you and I know uh, what we did in our office uh, Actually, we have it in this office, but our old office, we actually took a wall and we painted the wall. Uh, and there's there's chroma key, I think it's chroma key or green screen paint or whatever they called it, um, green screen paint that we were able to paint on the wall. Um, in my old office, that's exactly what we used. Uh, but you can also find, if you don't want to paint your wall, you can also find, um, you know, green screen. I guess it's a, it's more of a not a sheet in a sense that you could use for that. And Mike knows more and more about that. Um, I personally will tell you that, you know, like he was talking about a redneck style of doing it. There's something that we went out and did. We just went to the uh, Walmart and found a green uh, uh, shower curtain and, and used that. And that actually worked perfectly for us too. Uh, but also, you know, uh, things on there. Now, Mike, I'll have you kind of hit a little bit more in these because you know this stuff better than I uh, over here. But I will tell you when it comes to green screens, it's kind of a couple of things that we did that worked really well well you know and the reason I put green screen up here and special effects one of the elements of television that we see uh, all the time are these things that are um, their effects you know uh, they're they're things that are um, uh, they, they create curiosity they they they're a wow factor to them you know they're not just shooting something with the camera and um, you know, there's lots of special effects um, that can help you with your business on online video. And 
it was interesting that over the years, I probably had more people. The two biggest questions I ever got was, which camera do you use? What's the best camera to use? And I would always say, one you know how to turn on and off and, and run. And then the other thing was, is how do you do green screen? And, and, they, and basically what all there is to doing green screen is, like you said, paint a wall or get a green background. You want a solid, uh, evenly lit, a flat green background. And then you stand in front of it or you or somebody else. And then what you're able to do, the software, anything that's green, you can replace it with another image or video. And, you know, it's, it's a nice effect. But it's kind of like a seasoning. Use it if there's a reason to use it. Because um, what happens is you shoot your video. Now you've got to figure out what background to put it. And you want to make sure that it, it looks nice. So you really need good software. And, and it's, it, it really slows down the process. Uh, but people are enamored with it. People love shooting, uh, you, know, you know, hey, I'm here at the beach. Uh, you know, here I'm in front of my mansion. You know, hey, here I am in downtown New York City. You know, you can do things like that. Uh, the green screen effect is the ability. In fact, one of the most popular uses of green screen is the weatherman. That weatherman is in front of a green or a blue screen. Blue and green are the two main colors that you do. And he's standing in front of, uh, and that weather map that he's pointing at is just a background. So, yes, it's a great effect. Green screen is worth uh, uh, learning. And one of the reasons I kind of got excited about green screen, again, is there is an iPad app for $4 that will let you shoot green screen videos. And then, and then there's a bunch of royalty-free uh, backgrounds of all kinds. So there's some, some uh, special effects that you can do with green screen and the iPad. It used, you know, the software years ago was pretty uh, limited. You know, you'd have a real hard time. Uh, getting rid of the green and replacing the background. Sometimes it wouldn't. It would start taking parts of your face away, and <laughs> and if you wore a green tie, you had a hole in your chest. So uh, <laughs> it, you know you had to be careful about it. But now this software has gotten so intelligent that you can. It's a little more forgiving, and and then the other thing is uh, text animations um, and scribe videos. That's probably two of the biggest. Uh, effects that I see in marketing videos, uh, t uh, flying text, animated text, um, uh, uh, images that fly out, fly across the screen, you know, those animation effects. And then you, I'm, I'm sure you've all seen the videos where the hand comes out with a felt tip pen and it starts writing text on the whiteboard or it draws pictures or it traces pictures or whatever. Well, those are called scribing and doodle effects. And those are, I think those are the important ones. There's a lot of other effects that are expensive, complicated to do, but because there's apps for the iPad that do these animation effects, one, the, one of the apps that I use is called IntroMate. It's a $3 app, and it makes amazing video animated intros. And then there's Video Scribe, which is like uh, 6 bucks, and it, it will create, you type in text, and the hand will come out and write it on the screen, and then it, it becomes a video. So uh, there's all kinds of apps that will let you do special effects, but the three that we put on the screen there, those are the ones that I have seen marketers effectively use to get response, um, and they raise the quality of your video. The fact that you could do, hey, I'm in New York City. Now I'm in Paris. Now I'm on the moon. I mean, that might create a, a, a great effect of getting a message across. Um, but more importantly, the scribing videos and animation effects. Those are the three that I think are most important. But however, amazingly, there are so many great video effects out there that you can incorporate in your videos. So just be, you know, it's kind of like a seasoning uh, uh, to a soup. You can put too much, you can ruin the soup by putting too much seasoning in it. You can ruin the video by overdoing it with effects. Use them sparingly, really use them creatively. And when you do, you could create a better video. Now, this is another thing that I see in YouTube videos and I see in sales videos that people make a huge mistake on. And, and what you want to do is you want to make sure that tip number 12, you get clean narration audio. That means when somebody's talking on camera or they're talking off camera, that's called voiceover, you have got to have close miking. Now, in fact, I'm in front of my microphone. And I want you guys to listen. I'm going to turn my head 
360 degrees. Oh, no, 180 degrees. Let me get my math right. Now, I'm talking, and all I did was turn my head away from the microphone. Now, when I turn back around to the microphone and get close to it, Matt, did you hear? Well, I don't hear it on my end because I'm hearing myself through my head. But did you hear a difference in the audio from just turning my head 180 degrees? Yeah, a radical difference. Radical, radical. difference. Yeah. That's because it's imperative to have the microphone consistently close to your speaking voice. And there's only two ways to do that. If when you're using the microphone built into the iPad or a camera and you get more than a foot away from that iPad or a foot away from that camera, the audio will radically sound different. It'll sound hollow, it'll sound distant, it'll be echoey, and it becomes hard to understand and unprofessional. So when you are uh, doing talking head with, and you, you're within a foot away from the iPad, you can make talking head videos that have clean audio. When you're doing voiceover with the iPad, uh, you can use the built-in microphone. And you know a camcorder won't let you do voiceover, but an iPad will. But when you're using a camera or an iPad, you need to get an external microphone. And the website, not an affiliate link, we're just letting you know, bhphotovideo.com is where they sell affordable professional microphones. And what you're seeing pictures of is what I personally use for all my marketing videos today. Uh, that is the Audio Technica handheld microphone. Uh, it's about a hundred bucks, and that and that is uh, there's all kinds of dynamic what are called dynamic handheld microphones. They're, they're all around a hundred bucks. Any brand is good. Uh, I like Audio Technica. Uh, that's what I'm talking on right now. And then that square box with the little cable in the miniature microphone. That's a lapel or called a lavalier microphone. It's a hundred dollars. That's the Audio Technica Pro 70. Uh, both of all of these devices are very inexpensive at bhphotovideo.com, and there's a little device there from Tascam, the IXZ, the, the white box there, that plugs into your iPad and allows you to use these great microphones. Uh, and what I recommend you get is like a 15-foot. These are not wireless microphones; these are wired microphones. And the reason I recommend wired microphones is wireless is way more expensive. Wired is affordable, $100 for the handheld, $100 for the lavalier, and 30 bucks for that uh, uh, device that allows you to uh, plug in these external professional microphones to your iPad. Uh, but no matter what you want to do, tip number 12 is if you want clean audio, you have got to be somewhere between 6 inches to an, uh, no more than a foot away from a microphone. When you get, I'm only about... My voice is not heading towards the microphone. You get poor audio because you're not close mic'd. All right? Yeah, it makes good sense. Well, Matt, this is coming well, into the I mean, things that are your expertise. And uh, this is what I do. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say to make it even better. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but the thing about a sales video. In other words, when you send somebody to a website and your purpose of that, the conversion that you want on that website is to consummate in a sale. Um, this is what I have done for years and has worked very well for me. And I just do it over and over again, no matter what the product or service. Uh, number one, you got to know who your target audience is for your product or service. I mean, you don't sell, you know, steaks to vegetarians and you don't sell beer to alcoholics. You got to make sure that your audience will see the value in your product or service, and you have to speak in a language that connects with them. They got to believe that you're one of them. And what I do is when I do a sales video, my psychology is I point out a problem that I know that market has, and I tell them how my product and service solves that problem. Then I show the features and benefits of the solution that I want to sell. I may interject testimonials of real happy customers. And then I ask for the order. I, I ask for a response. I have a call to action. And I mean, I can give you an example. My audience uh, that I target are people who want to make online video. And the problem is they struggled with the cameras and the microphones. Then I show them how m what I've come up with a solution that makes it easy, affordable, and works and I share the features and benefits of that you have this problem 
I have the solution. And here's real life people who never made video before in their lives telling you that what my solution did for them is real. And then I say, if all of this resonates with you, click the buy button below this video and order now. <coughs> it's a simple, I don't even know where this completely came from. I think it's probably part goes all the way back to Claude Hawkins, probably goes uh, Dan Kennedy, Matt Basak. I don't know who taught me all this, but that's the formula I use. Now, Matt, I'm going to listen to what you have to say. Well, that's good because, I mean, I was thinking about it. I use, depending on what specifically it is, but, you know, a lot of times when I'm doing, trying to do something short, sweet, straight to the point, uh, video, or, you know, a lot of times I'm even using this, especially in, in when you hit on it. When I'm talking strictly to my target audience, um, who I want to talk to, the kind of the formula I use in a nutshell, it's pretty easy. It's, it's one, two, three, four method in a sense, but it's basically here's what I've got for you. Uh, that would be number one. Number two was, you know, is more or less, you know, what it's going to do for you. And then number three, and, and this one thing most people lack is who in the world am I? You know, who am I? And then number four is, you know, what you need to do next. And in a sense, you know, those are kind of, that's the quick and, you know, dirty on the formula. But if you think about that, when I talk about what, you know, what, what I got to do for you or what it's going to do for you, you know, think about it. If, you know, you know, what's the product, what does it do, who's it for kind of thing. So if it's like, you know, step by step, you know, course that teaches you how to go from, you know, not knowing how to use a, uh, use a video camera to, you know, bringing in customers day in and day out um, through video, you know, that kind of an idea like that. But then, you know, um, in a sense of, you know, what, you know, what's it's going to do for you, you know, it's really, it's, it's, it's more the, the, the benefits, you know. Um, I'm really answering a lot of the questions, you know, so what's so good about that? And there, there's a big distinction between benefits and features. And, and what I want to do when I say what is it going to do for you, it's really keeping in mind the fact that it's, it's benefit-driven, talking about the benefits, the great benefits of whatever I want the, the, the person watching uh, to be able to, um, you know, have from there, um, you know, from that. And a lot of times... You know, in, in a sense, then, so that's number one. Number two, uh, if we're looking at number three, of course, who am I? Um, you know, who am I? That's pretty easy. It's like, you know, hey, I'm, you know, Matt Basic, I've been doing, you know, that, and because of Mike, I've been doing video uh, for, gosh, since we've met, <laughs> uh, because he really impacted them that are doing audio and video, um, f you know, for a while, da 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 da, da. kind of let them know, you know, over the years, I've made millions of dollars because of videos that I put on the internet, um, you know, and kind of just letting people know. Uh, who am I? You know, what gives me the right to to share with you what I'm about to share with you, and and if you really think about that too, um, is you know it's really important because people need to know who they're going to buy from, um, you know, and it's it's one of those things that a lot of people actually Dan and I were talking about this years ago is you know you can't assume everybody knows who the heck you are, so you want to make sure that you you outline who you are, establish your credibility, establish your trustworthiness. Um, that you're a worthwhile person for them to order from, and basically it's basically a, a way for credi credibility builder and to get them to take action. And of course, you know what you should do next. This is basically what you know the call to action. It's you know letting them know, taking the reader, um, you know, giving you know giving the specific, you know, clear action. What I want you to do next. Here's exactly what I'm going to do next. Um, you know, right now, because if you don't give people a um, you know, it's the direct command of what to do, then they're never going to do it. So it's like, here's exactly what I want you to do right now. I want you to go, you know, uh, go to this website listed that just showed up. And the third, you know, we just talked about the in the lower third of, uh, you know, part of this, you know, you know, screen right now, or click the button below, or however I did it. Um, but you know, giving them a call to action, what to do next, and pretty much, it's it's really just like that. It's one, two, three, four, um, and it's very magic. I think it has a lot of you know magic powers using that. Um, strategy right there and it works really really well for me um, basically you'll see a lot of that in infomercials you'll see it a lot of that in sales copies and in reviews but it's a really good way uh, to masterfully uh, pitch and get a you know an, an inject a call to action absolutely all right and what this is the terminology that uh, um, that I use with a sales video I call it a video landing page and a video sales letter uh, basically taking the psychologies that Matt and I talked about. And in the old days, and in fact, when I first met Dan Kennedy, um, 
I, he said something that was really impactful to me. He said that the Internet to him was nothing more than direct mail with electrons. Basically, what he used to do in sales letters that were printed and you put a postage stamp on, he started using the same psychologies, strategies, techniques, uh, copywriting verbiage, uh, magnetic words, hypnotic uh, uh, verbiage. Uh, I mean, I, I heard him hear so many things that I'd never heard before. Uh, you know, how the word amazing, secrets, um, all those kind of little words have more power than uh, saying, you know, good. Uh, you know, is, is amazing better than good is you don't know better than secrets. I mean, there's all these words. So when you put all of that same information in print and put a postage stamp on it or you made it a long-form sales letter on a single-page website, po people made money before there was an Internet doing these strategies, uh, these marketing strategies. But you take those same direct response sales strategies, psychologies, verbiage, hypnotic words, magnetic words, all of the labels that some of the great copywriters have put on it, and you put that same content in what I called a video landing page, meaning the minute somebody lands on your page that they see above the fold is a video that either has a red headline that says, watch this video now, or in, you know we'll talk about it in a minute, whether you want to make it an auto-run video. There's two different ways you can do that. What you're doing is the same information that used to be uh, on paper or same information that used to be a long-form sales letter, that information starts coming out of that video. And so uh, tip number 14 is when you really get good at making the best possible direct response sales video, make a video landing page. Matt? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, it's just it's just a different way. I mean, before on some of the things he was talking about with the pages, um, you know, earlier I would kind of put or put in branding. This one's really more on a on a sales page, and I know I use you know sales landing pages or direct response uh, sales videos all the time. This is I made mean, tons and tons of money uh, because of that, and also there's a hybrid too, where it's not just you know where it's only the talking head and you know the call to action, but also underneath it, which you know underneath it giving a description of exactly what uh, people are going to receive. But yeah, those are really good and um, things to you know take in consideration. Absolutely. All right. Now, another type of video when you uh, that has served me really well over the years, and uh, um, I know Matt has made trainings this way. But I, you know, I used to sell um, hardware, and I know a lot of businesses, you know, sell things that need support. Um, and customer support is huge. You know, if you don't support your customers, they're not going to support you. Uh, so, you know, I for years. Uh, and it, re it was interesting. I've been at a lot of seminars where I would get an email from somebody saying, you know, I received this and I don't know how to do this. And I used to have a rule. If I got two questions from a customer, I made a video to answer the question. And I actually built a support site called whatyoubotfrommike.com. It's still live to this day. And I put all my support videos there. And they're for my customers only. They're not meant to do anything other than support my customers. So, you know, right there was one of the biggest questions I used to get. It's like, I can't get this thing to screw together. You know, what am I doing wrong? And then I would send a link, did you watch this video? And then literally minutes later I go, no, I didn't watch the video. Golly, I'm so sorry. I mean, they get apologetic. But the thing is, is the fact that I could support a customer with a link to a video has made a many a happy customer for me, customer for me, and it would be literally impossible for me to explain how to take that silver nut out of that black screw hole over the phone. But this video showed it, you know, in a matter of seconds. So a type of video that you should do, I don't care what your business is, make sure that you have a library of support videos because it will save you time. It will, it, you know, you don't have to try to explain it over the phone. Um, you don't have to ship them a DVD. Uh, you know, back in the old days, we used to put customer support DVDs um, uh, in, in with our uh, packages. But nowadays, we just put it up online. So online video for support is a huge opportunity if, you know, if your business uh, doesn't have it. I don't care what your business is. When people have questions and they want support, I've got a chiropractor 
who has over 50 questions answered, the frequently asked questions, and when somebody calls into the office, they say, well, would you like me to send you a link to where the doctor can answer that question for you? People are wowed by the fact that instantaneously, right to their cell phone, they can watch a support video that answers their question. And you know who you're going to get the who's going to get the business? The person that supports their customers, or the person who goes, you know, I can't help you figure it out. I mean, that's just no way to treat a customer. Customer support videos will make you a hero and are <laughs> put it on autopilot. So, any any other comments on that, Matt? No, I think I mean the big thing. That's exactly what you do. I think it's really good, especially when you're getting. Uh, you made a comment, something we use in our office. If we have to answer the question twice, you know, we are either creating a can response for it, or exactly what you're talking about is if it we can do it on a video side of things, um, you know, specifically on the video side of things, where we it's something we have to show. Uh, we want to make sure that we create a video so that we don't have to answer the dang thing. I mean, it, it, from one thing, I mean, if everybody's asking, we get that other question. It's really easy. Like, no problem. Just watch this video. Um, you know, instead of you know and making it happen from there, um, you know, addressing it. It's really and it's plus it's going to make a lot more people happier, and it's going to make your time save you a lot of time too. Now, another thing that has benefited me, and I know it's benefited Matt is making video content you sell uh, and the, the big opportunities I think that are today and there's probably and we're going to share some other ones too as well but you know probably one of the most profitable things I have is a membership site of training videos in other words screen capture videos um, uh, camera videos I mean teaching people my expertise uh, has been a tremendously profit center for me so Video, premium videos, content you sell, and membership sites. And then now there's online training sites, which we're going to talk about. Uh, and one of the things that you know that you got this through the WSO or JVZoo. Uh, there's another opportunity um, to sell video content. I mean, in fact, some of the most profitable stuff in the last three months from the day we're recording this, Matt, on JVZoo were all video-related trainings. Um, you know, video software, video training software. It's been amazing how uh, excited people have gotten over this. So, you know, the type of video that you you can be making is the stuff that you can be uh, uh, not stuff you give away for free, but stuff that you get paid for. And um, you know, WSO, JVZoo, your own membership site. Um, uh, I use WordPress and Wishlist Member. I use AIM Member. There's all kinds of ways that you can get paid for the content you create in video. Yeah, and we do, I'm pretty sure, I mean, you know, especially in the last five or six years, earlier on, we were putting them on VHS tapes, well, early, early on, you know, and then we moved over to the CD or DVDs, and, you know, now, I mean, a lot of, I, I, I did an event not too long ago, and I think I gave out some of my, you know, Older DVDs, the stuff I had around the around the office, that I just haven't been selling. It's not that I haven't I haven't tried to sell lately. I just they've been sitting in boxes. But now, because majority of all my stuff I'm selling are videos that I sell online, and that's where a lot of people like to do that. And I'll tell you a little trick uh, that we do when we're selling our premium videos. I like to you know because the cool thing is is when you are creating uh, the videos, you can act, you know take uh, save it as an mp4 which you talked about um, and that's what we do and then we also save it as an mp3 where it's just audio and then I usually get it transcribed so now we have three different modalities for people to learn into that you can really jack it increases the value uh, of the content that people are receiving uh, when they're getting it. so it's not just video if they don't want to watch the whole thing or they don't have time to do it they can listen to it if they just don't want to listen to it they want to read or they can actually read while they're going along they can highlight things uh, through the transcriptions, and the interesting thing is, because uh, you know, I started doing that a lot more, and more people are noticing it. Uh, I I run a forum, and inside the uh, it's, it's all about list building. But inside the forum, I felt bad for a guy because um, it's actually my partner in the forum. He's like, "Hey, and your new product is there any way I can also get it as an audio and I also get it as a transcription? Uh, I see that you just gave the video." And he's like, I'm sorry, I don't do it that way because I think I kind of created the trend uh, inside our group of people expecting to get kind of things like that. But it, but it's one thing to help increase the perceived value of your premium videos. Absolutely. And, in fact, if you're watching this and hearing us right now, 
it's the result of a premium video. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, and then, of course, the other thing, and, and this will let you see what I was talking about with YouTube. And, in fact, this was kind of the thing that woke me up to YouTube a couple of years ago and made me realize that I need to pay more attention. Uh, giving, video a content, giving video content away for free through YouTube or even from training sites or social media and blogs, you know, making great content in video that is to become a lead generator. And uh, if you go to Google, and I, I invite you to go anytime you want to to Google and type in write book in three hours, write a book in three hours, you'll see that there's a screenshot of Google. My video uh, about how to write a book in three hours with a microphone is something that I put up, oh, four years ago and forgot about it. And then all of a sudden, one day, about two years ago, people started sharing the video and it got posted on some other video blogs. And thank goodness I put lower third text in it because I started seeing by uh, uh, Google Analytics that YouTube was sending me a hundred clicks a day to my internetaudioguy.com website. And I go, why is YouTube sending me so much traffic? Well, this video started getting shared. It was really good content. People said, my gosh, it was a seven minute video on how to, you know, uh, dictate your book, get it transcribed, put it up. You know, it, it was really, it was valuable information. But because it was good information, people started sharing it with each other and the thing started getting, you know, 100, 200 views a day. And I was getting an average of 100 clicks a day to my website. Now, what's the value of 100 visitors to your website every day for free? Huge. I was paying 50 cents to a dollar a click. You know, that's like $100 a day in paid advertising. You know, I used to give Google AdWords money. And here they were giving it to me for free because I had a video that people liked. It was free, but then it started giving me people that I started noticing my opt-ins for my email list was growing, and people were buying from me because this video was building a no-like trust factor. Now, the thing that I want you to take a notice here, uh, and I'm kind of running my mouse around it so you can see it, because this video became popular on YouTube, look at the size of that icon. It takes up the whole page in Google. That's huge, guys. You get Google is giving me that much space because that video is popular. So anyway, giving away good content to generate leads uh, uh, from training sites, social media sites, and blogs is a way to get visitors to your website. Yeah, and I think I mean it is really important. It is a really important point. I I never saw it before until you showed me. Uh, we we're at your house actually putting together this content. I was sitting there like. What? I, I mean, I really was uh, just floored to be able to see that Google did give away that much space because, you know, I mean, that's a lot of real estate. I mean, if you really think about this, especially on Google, that's a lot of real estate. I mean, why would you go even look at any of the other guys underneath that video? You wouldn't. And this is on Google. This is not on YouTube, which is cool. You know, somebody searching for that on the web on Google, um, you know, and finding there's a big old thing. And then you got the other things underneath it. You're not going to go look at the other things. You're going to go look at that one right there. All right, and in fact, that's just a giant thumbnail. Uh, if your video is not as popular, you get a miniature thumbnail. But anyway, my point is you don't get to play in this arena at all unless you make good video content, which is why we've been giving all these tips anyway. Now, here's some things that I'm seeing huge potential with and I am just um, uh, really excited about, and it's very new. Um, well, it's a couple of years old, but I think it's still in its infancy, and there's lots of opportunity for people who have good content. Uh, and, the, and these are training sites that are absolutely free. And this is one of the first ones called Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y dot com. And basically, if you can create 30 minutes or more of good video content in chunks, not one piece, you know, little, little, they call them lectures, then you can put them up here on the site that has a population of about 3 million users right now. And they are aggressively marketing Udemy to the corporate world. 
And one of the things that was exciting to me, there are people in Udemy selling video training, uh, how to do things, and one particular guy has made over a million dollars selling his training um, to through this website. It's actually shoe money. I'm sitting here looking at right here, just to give you guys some ideas, um, you know. And basically, shoe uh, shoe money. Let me kind of get you guys really thinking, right? So he created how to make money online, the shoe money system. Sold it for one thousand five nine hundred ninety five dollars, and he's got two thousand four hundred students. I mean, do the math right there. But I mean, even look at this. I mean, there's people. The price ranges I'm seeing here. You got it from nine dollars. Thirteen dollars. I mean, what I'm looking at, you know, thirty, thirty-seven dollars. I really will tell you guys, um, Mike. You know, Mike showed me this stuff. I didn't even know anything about it. Quite honestly, I had no idea uh, exactly what it was. I started doing some um, research right here. Um, you know, here's somebody that did, uh, you know, a nine-dollar offer, how to make money uh, online the real way. You know, got one thousand three hundred. Uh, people, you know, on there. There's a couple of them. I mean, there's they're all over the place. And you can go in there and just kind of get a, uh, you know, go to Udemy.com, and and it's you see you well you can see the URL or I mean see the name there, but just go to Udemy.com and you could literally do a quick search and see what other people are doing. I mean, and it show you stats, the price, the reviews, the students, uh, how many students they have, and you can kind of just do the math and figure out how much you get. And the cool thing is, you load your stuff up. It, you know, there's an area where it says, you know, do you want to be or are you an expert? You just say, you, you know, you go in there and say create a course and. Um, you know, you can inject your stuff up there and, you know, get paid. And the cool thing is, is they don't really take, if I'm not familiar, um, you know, uh, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, it wasn't that bad percentage they take. Oh, here we go. The average instructor. Here's an interesting, um, how much do you earn with it? Well, I'm just looking here, uh, just thinking out loud. It says more than you think. The average instructor earns $7,000 on Udemy. Now, granted, but 96% of the instructors... Are making so of, of structures make sales. <laughs> That's a really good stat. <laughs> well, and and the thing that they do, if you drive traffic to your own product, you keep all the money. Oh, so interesting. if you don't know how to make a membership site, they'll handle everything for you. In, in fact, you, Udemy is is just a way for you to not even without a website, you can basically become a trainer and get paid. Um, and if Udemy gets you the website, they they take uh, I think 50% of the money. So if you sell a course for $100, you're going to make $50 a, a course. But the truth is, the thing that I like about what all these training site folks, video training sites are doing, they have no exclusivity. You can take the same content that you sell on your own website and sell it through Udemy and just say, okay, Udemy, get me some more customers. You just can repurpose your content. They don't have exclusive to it. It's it's your content, and they encourage you to do other stuff with your stuff, your content. So anyway, Udemy is a, a great opportunity. Go investigate it. Um, it's it, but once again, it requires you being able to make video, either full motion video or screen capture video. And in fact, one of the things we looked in in here, there are so many niches, and there's so many expertises. That there's no training on. In fact, I, I I'll, I'll share this because um, you know there I have a nutritionist who is an expert at nutrition, and there's no nutrition courses. So whatever your niche is, there's a possibility that you could train the world through Udemy. But not only is there Udemy, you may have heard of Shutterstock. Shutterstock is a huge uh, photo library, big company. They just launched this, a competition to Udemy called Skill Feed. It's a different model. They've got over 32,000 students, <coughs> but they don't have that many trainers. So you can take your same exact course that you did at Udemy, and you can make money with it at Skill Feed. So it's the same thing. It's just like there's Walmart and there's Kmart, but you can put your product in both stores. There's also a new one that just launched recently, Skillshare.com. I can tell you, folks, I'm putting my training in all three because I can sell my training at my own membership site, and then I can turn around and repurpose it 
and let them do the marketing. They are spending marketing dollars getting people to find these courses and then I'm findable in these training sites. So I'm able to take the same MPEG-4 file and repurpose it in multitude of places and make extra money on autopilot. So the, perp the tips here, and I'll go back over these one more time, the three training sites that you need to pay attention to, and there's the screenshots, Udemy, Tip 18, Tip 19, SkillFeed.com, and tip number 20, Skillshare. All three are free to be trainers. They need you to create video trainings. Any comments, Matt? No, I mean, I think it's a great place because a lot of people are like, well, you know, I'm just starting out. You know, where can I go? Well, if you've got some, you know, cool things that you want to, you know, train and get out to the world, I mean, heck, you can always get a start here and not even have to worry about the sales videos and the everything else. I mean, and then, and then even with that, you don't need to worry about, I mean, you could do it with Talking Head if you want to, but but if you're doing some, you know, a lot of the training with that, I'll tell you, uh, you don't even need that. You could probably do a lot of your stuff through, uh, you know, through presentations um, and taking the screen capture uh, videos of a presentation, take screen capture videos of um, you showing how to do things online and things like that. Absolutely. And in fact, the way they've set it up really helps you get it uh, positioned to where you are, uh, you know, it helps you with the marketing. In other words, you won't get on there just by posting it. They approve you, and if there's problems, they guide you because they want you to create a, a, a hit program. Because if you win, they win. So anyway, these are tips of places to take video and make better video. Now, let's get into optimizing your videos for search. Um, we'll go back to my good friend Hal Coleman, uh, who you can see here, he knew his keywords. And because he titles his keywords correctly, titles his videos correctly in social media and in blog posts, his keywords of pest control marketing, which brings him customers every day, is what has made him rise in Google. So, number one, if you're going to optimize your videos for search, you need to make blog posts with your keywords in, with tags. You need to title your videos. And we're going to get into the titling of video here in a second. But, you know, this is basic um, search engine marketing, search engine optimization. You know, I, one of the things I ask customers all the time, what words do your customers type into Google? And you'll be surprised how many people go, I don't know, you know, uh, chiropractor. Well, you know, their chiropractor may not be your best keywords. Your customer may be searching for, you know, pain, back pain, neck pain, knee pain, fibromyalgia. You know, you have to really think about what words bring you customers. And that's how you optimize your videos for search. And now, Matt is a better search guy, engine guy than I am, so anything you want to add to this, please do. Yeah, I mean, I think you pretty much nailed a lot of that. Um, <laughs> interesting enough, I do, there are, you know, different programs you can use to find out. I mean, you want to find what, what keywords people are actually searching for. I mean, I think that's where it really comes down to anything there and making sure you have it in the title. You have it, you know, throughout uh, from it, you know, now, right now, I will tell you, um, you know, a lot of people are talking about and, you know, even getting into when it comes to search engines. And, and I don't think we're going to talk anything about this, but what the one of the fast ways to get to the top of the search engines and today, like right now, this moment um, is is through actually doing uh, Google Hangouts, um, you know, Google Hangouts are really big doing uh, things there. YouTube video and and just and just to share with you too, optimizing for YouTube is really big. Earlier on, he talked about you know when people you know people will take it and, and pass around on the internet and it kind of goes viral uh, when they're putting on their pages. But people doing the search searching, you know, like we were talking about in there. Like I mean, people are searching. I, I, you know, I tell people all the time, the word used to be Google it, now I'm like YouTube it, you know, like YouTube, you know, YouTube it, man, like somebody want to know, I got people hitting me up, asking me questions in the, you know, you know, we've got about 20,000 members inside our, on this one thing, and it's like, they'll hit me up and ask me this question, I'm like, go to YouTube it, like, why, you know, like, I'm not telling them to Google it, because they're probably not going to find it, I'm telling them to YouTube it, so they can actually watch to see how you get it done, and, 
you know, it's one of those things. If you can be found, and it's just looking at what keywords you might want to look at a competitor's page, uh, you know, a competitor's video, um, and look at the things that you know from there. What keywords, pass, you know, possibly they're using. Uh, but you know, the fact of the matter is, yeah, I mean, think about that. Optimizing for YouTube and for the search for Google um, is a good thing. But um, but really uh, taking consideration, you know, where do people search for videos inside YouTube? So um, if you're doing YouTube stuff. Absolutely. All right, let's go here. Now, one of the things that I don't see people doing a lot of, and I want to share with you, you know, how Hal has been so successful with it. Um, you know, when he puts up a YouTube video, he places that video on his blog as a blog post. In other words, he takes what's called the embed code from YouTube, and then he will blog about that video. He will write, you know, a, a, a one or two um, paragraph. Uh, kind of uh, sur uh, surmising of what's in the video content, uh, you know, kind of going over, you know, because so, the search engine, uh, when they uh, index this page, um, you know, I don't know if they have the technology to hear the content in the video or not. Uh, there's been rumblings of that. But I do know that they, you know, the search engine uh, spiders want to see text on the page. And what's one of the things that's really, really important is you know be sure that you title your blog post with the keywords that you want to get found for and what happens is is when that blog page gets indexed in Google because of something called blog and ping uh, meaning post a blog post and then you go to a, a website like uh, I don't know what you use Matt but pingomatic is the one WordPress built in fact WordPress automatically every time you post a new blog post it will ping the blog search engine um, and and of course, what happens is is that that blog page can get found for other word uh, for other keywords, and what that's doing it's building a library of video content at your website. But then what happens is his header graphic there uh, and his um, navigation of WordPress means that if somebody found this particular January 11th blog post, they're one click away from his products, his phone number, uh, his uh, consulting service. And then the big other big thing is that video there that was the blog post, it's not his home page, his opt-in box is always there. So he's getting traffic to his blog posts, which are helping people surf his site, get to his website, call his phone number, and it's helping him build a list because every blog post over there on the right has the opt-in box, which he's actively saying, hey, receive my free tips, grow your business. He, uh, subscribe to my list and instantly receives the seven things you need. You have to want, must know if you want to grow your pest control business. I mean, it's growing his list. And so not only is he built a library in YouTube, he's building the same library on his domain name. And then when people email him questions, he has a, he doesn't want to send people to YouTube to watch the YouTube video. He wants to send people to his website to see that YouTube video. See, in other words, he's getting the benefit of his YouTube video, but he, when he sends a link to it in an email, either in a broadcast email or uh, or a one-on-one um, uh, -on -one email question, he's not going to send them to YouTube. He's going to send them to the YouTube vi video embedded in his website. So, anyway, uh, any comments on this, or we'll go to the next tip? No, I think you pretty much nailed it. Excellent. All right, uh, autoplay uh, a video when they come on the landing page, when to or not. Um, my opinion, and it's not science, if I know that the traffic is coming from an email, let's say I'm sending somebody to a website through an email blast, or I'm sending somebody that I, that the, that I want them to buy, then generally I will have an autoplay. If I'm sending somebody to a website where they're a stranger and they don't know me and they don't realize that 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 I'm trying to send you know somebody that has a little bit of a relationship with me, then I generally put a headline and a what's called a preview image that says, you know, uh, glad you came here. Um, watch this video to learn why this will help you. So in other words, I'll use a headline without autoplay. Uh, I've, you know, the, the probably the real answer is split test and see what works best. Uh, I'm guilty of not doing that, but I kind of my rule of thumb is, 
If it's strangers, I don't autoplay. If it's people that have a little bit of a relationship with me, then I, I they're more forgiving that when they click on the link in an email or they click on the link uh, from an ad, that, they, that the minute they land on that video page, that video is going to automatically play. Uh, I'd love to hear your side of the story. Yeah, no, I think the you pretty much – I mean, in a sense, you narrow it down to the simplest form. A lot of times when I have – when it's a sales video, uh, for me, depending on where it's placed. So if it's a page I control on the internet that um, is a sales uh, page where I'm selling something, I am going to have it where it's going to be autoplay. Um, if it's uh, – you know, well, 99% of the time, sales that are selling a product. Now, if it's uh, a video – um, that maybe it's a webinar replay that I'm putting up because uh, I did record it and I would do a screen capture recording of it um, and putting up that type of video. Sometimes I do have that where it is they push the button and get it to play so they could be able to watch it, stop it whenever they want. Um, the And if I'm putting something on the forum, I can't actually have it autoplay, which I wish I could. It really sucks, but uh, I can't, so I have to put it where you know they, they put it from there. But And when it comes to training videos, um, training videos, typically, you know, I'm going to have them push the button, uh, not have it autoplay um, at all. You know, they're they're going to when they're ready to watch the training, they push the button and do that. Um, so the so those are some things to, to think about. Actually, this exact question uh, came up the other day in uh, one of my workshops um, or my 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 event that I did um, is about autoplay and stuff like that. I said, you know, but you you hit it. Like it was interesting. Like you know, if I know the traffic, then it's going to be autoplayed. If I don't know the traffic, it's not going to be autoplayed. It's probably the best way to actually put it, um, especially when it comes from a sales perspective. Absolutely. Again, all right. Um, this is where I see people make so many mistakes um, with YouTube, and uh, so the tip here is, um, you know, do YouTube right, and of course. Uh, you know, one of the things that when uh, that has revolutionized, you know, our case study of Hal Coleman here um, is that he wanted he knew that people looking for pest control marketing, pest control advertising. That was the term that he needed to be found for. And and I and my advice to him was is make great video content and post it weekly. You know, don't sit down and try to do 100 videos in a day. Just say every week I'm going to post a new video with new key, new keywords and let's see if you can start dominating and getting views. Now, I mean, you know, for an unknown non-celebrity to get 1,100 views, and, and, and now he's uh, way past 100 videos right now, he is now dominating Google and YouTube for his keywords, which, you know, he told me is bringing in, I mean, the phone rings every day with new customers because he's, go, he's drilled down into his niche and he's using this. But let's talk about in detail about this done right. Number one, for when it comes to tip for doing YouTube right, how you title your videos is key. It is so important that, um, you know, if you don't title your videos right, there's a good chance nobody's going to find them for the keywords that you want to be found for. In fact, this is a case study of a local business uh, client of mine that we shot an iPad video with. And the gentleman who never, you know, didn't have a YouTube channel, didn't know, didn't even understand that it was important. But number one, here's the question I asked Ted Hadlick there from LanierAluminumProducts.com. I said, Ted, what makes you money? I said, tell me something in your business that is low-hanging fruit, profitable business. And he said, Mike, motorized retractable awnings is what makes me money. So that became the title, what he sells and where he sells them, Gainesville, Georgia. And I tell you, go test Google. If you put in motorized retractable awning in Georgia, you're going to find linear aluminum products. So when you title your videos, don't title them another video, video one, video two. Uh, I've actually seen videos in YouTube, the file name. VMDSC0037241.mp4 was the title of a video that, that it was getting views. You know, YouTube will allow you to use keywords when you title the videos. Uh, Matt? 
No, I, I mean, I mean that's that is probably one of the biggest things you'll see the you know the direct. I mean, if somebody's searching for it in YouTube, you know, or you know wherever really, even in the search engines, people searching for it, that title, the title is really important uh, of the file, uh, and not only that too. And like I said earlier with the description, but I mean exactly what he said. I mean, you know, how how would you how would you like it? Somebody searching for your term, find your video, and building the relationship from there, and and making that you know call to action. Um, you know, uh, you know, nothing's better than that. And then the same video here. You want to properly link your videos, and of course, you see there. Look what we got: his name and his web address in the lower third. Now you see that you see there in the description of your YouTube vi um, uh, video description. I recommend to all my clients and all my students to start off with a, cl a clickable link. In the description, that means um, that when somebody finds this video on YouTube, however they find it, that YouTube will give you a free clickable link in the description, and unlimited links for that matter. But I always start off with a clickable link in the description. You want to put a good description. You want to use what's called tags. But I, I, I don't know how many videos, and you ought to go look at YouTube just to kind of study it yourself. How many people put up great videos that are titled poorly, no lower third text, and then no clickable link in the description? And in fact, something that I didn't know, Matt, until just a week or so ago, you can put clickable links in the annotations section of YouTube. That means that I could put a hot spot over his web address right here, and make that clickable to my website. Nice. So don't leave any stone unturned because, folks, that one click can mean thousands of dollars to you. You know, Matt's had co consulting clients pay him thousands of dollars just for a day of his time. So every click is valuable. Don't make it hard for people to find you. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, the, I mean, the fact of the matter is, uh, through a video, they actually came to something else. But uh, I, literally, before we got on this call today, that's actually why I told you I, we had to do it at a certain time instead of I said I had an appointment. Uh, I was on the phone with somebody. It's twenty thousand dollar a day, you know. So I did. It's twenty thousand dollars for a day of consulting for people to come over, and uh, you know, I basically send in the check and all the stuff for me to look at in the mail right now. So. Um, you know, and it, and it actually started off from a video to then he ended up coming to an event from there. But it all that's where it all started. It's the relationship, absolutely. Well, here's a tip that uh, um, that I'm seeing more people do is you know putting phone numbers um, in the title. Enter. And and the reason they're putting a phone number in the title is that when this video gets indexed in Google the title of that video with the phone number is being allowed. So uh, this, if you go to Google, and, I, and, I, and this, was a, this is a, an SEO person that's in my mastermind and was talking about this tip, and it just never dawned on me, and I'm going to go back and help businesses do this. You type AC Repair Miami, AC Repair Miami. You will see the phone number in the, uh, at the top of Google in the title tag. Yeah, and if you think about it, and actually I'm seeing it right here, here's one of the cool things about this that really appeared to me, which is I think even bigger power, is look at it, it's already, you click to go to Skype, but I guarantee you, and I haven't done it on my cell phone, which I turned it off because we were doing this, but you know, I guarantee if I was on my cell phone, I bet that would be hot linked. I could just click, click the link and I'm calling oh, that business. Yeah, all phone numbers on cell phones should tap to call. So yeah. at any rate, if you're a local business and you want phone calls as the call to action, put your phone number in the title of the video. It's a no-brainer. Okay. And what happens by doing all this is what I call search engine optimization juice. You're getting white hat backlinks from YouTube, other blogs, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Instagram, social media. You're getting high-ranking backlinks from these big sites because they're allowing you to link back to your website. So um, I know the fact that putting the links in, in these uh, video descriptions 
uh, and then they get shared on other social media because one of the things that's really interesting when you share your videos in Facebook your description and your clickable links come with them as well as in Pinterest and LinkedIn and of course my son is all about Instagram and I haven't really done as much with Instagram but he is making you could put up 15 second videos in Instagram and have all kinds of links and things to do with that and Instagram seems to be huge with uh, with especially the younger generation in fact there's people out there making business 15 second Instagram commercials that are converting into business so nice, nice. nice. Uh, let's see here and I still make money with this, Matt. Uh, this is a website called Kunaki, K-U-N-A-K-I dot com. If you can make a DVD, and that's called authoring. If you can, uh, and in fact, on Windows, there's Windows DVD Maker. It's a free software. Uh, there's, uh, I'm sure there's DVD authoring software on the Mac. You can't do this on a phone or an iPad. You have to make DVDs on a computer. But if you can make a master DVD. You can. Get, there are still people that order DVDs and All CDs. Right. I just shipped but some out I, today. <laughs> okay, but you know what? I don't want to stock them anymore. I don't want to fulfill them anymore. I don't want to put. I don't want to pay somebody to put them in an envelope anymore. So Kanaki will let you have a library of video content to sell. But when, but what they do is. They will duplicate it, charge the customer shipping, and you sell it for whatever you want to, and they give you the difference. So, in other words, let's say you have a DVD that you sell for twenty bucks. They will duplicate it for a dollar, charge the customer shipping, and send you nineteen dollars. So, you can build a website selling DVD on-demand duplication of DVDs. I, I have a <laughs> my buddy Hal and I have a comedy site called Milton Crab Apple. And we sell comedy DVDs every month on autopilot. No storage, no fulfillment, no nothing. Just send traffic to uh, our website. We have a video sales letter. We're building a list. And people click on the link, and Kanaki handles it and pays. And they charge us only a dollar to duplicate it. And then uh, we get the, they, every month on the 15th, our profit goes into our PayPal. Now, here's the competition to Kanaki, and I recommend do both. CreateSpace.com is owned by Amazon, and when you put your DVDs up on CreateSpace.com, you are now in Amazon. And not only will they do DVDs and CDs, this is how you can do printed books on demand. You can actually upload a PDF file of your book and they will make a printed book. This is how I get my books on demand when I want to have. I've got a couple of books up here, and it's amazing. They're, they're paperback books, but they do a great job. But the big thing that they do with video is if you, have a D, if you want to take your course and turn it into a DVD, you can put it up on CreateSpace, and then you can sell it for a profit through Amazon. So those are the two um, on-demand profit opportunities um, that, that you can make, you know, take your better video and make money with it. Now, here's something that I think is a huge opportunity for many years to come. Um, you can see this article. Uh, the iTunes App Store has 1.2 million apps in it. Okay? That's 1.2 million pieces of software. And the App Store is less than, I don't know, five or six years old, maybe maybe only five. I'm not sure. Um, uh, I probably should have researched that before now. But let's just let's say it's no more. The App Store has only been around six years. That means that 1.2 million pieces of software have been developed in thousands of niches. Now, I know people who have made millions of dollars teaching software. And there is a way... To make video trainings for iPad and iPhone apps and I don't know how to do it for Android but I'm going to figure it out but the truth is even though all these apps don't need trainings there are lots of them that do in all kinds of business areas 
So look in the app store in your niche. Like I, I was talking to somebody who was a financial planner. There were over 200 retirement planning apps, and I guarantee you there's an audience that doesn't know how to use them. So you can make money making video trainings to put in Udemy, to put on DVDs, to put in your membership site. I'm living proof that making training for the iPhone apps can make you money. So this is a tip right here. Make, tra make trainings for the software. See, they call them apps, but they were basically like Microsoft was reinvented all over again. All an app is is software that runs on a phone or a tablet. That's all it is. And they need training. Uh, you know, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Tom Antion of M Matt and I's, has made millions training one shopping cart. It's turned into all kinds of, uh, of money for him because he made training videos years ago on how to use that particular shopping cart. The same concept is wide open. There's, there's no way that I could get to all the apps in the app store in my, a lifetime. So, and, and it, if it's grown to 1.2 million in, six, in less than five or six years, where's it going to be five years from now? It's amazing. So anything, you know, we're getting ready to, to wind it up here, Matt. What, what do you have any comments about this? Well, I mean, I think, I mean, the big thing is just like what you even talked about is, you know, finding something, I mean, kind of breaking down one big thing is finding something inside your niche, inside your market that's, you know, an iPhone or an iPad app and creating, you know, screen capture videos to show people how to use them. I mean, even like, you know, the editing software that we, I mean, that's, you probably already, you know, you, that's caused you probably to think of this, but it's like, wow, you know, if I can get a video of exactly how to use it, even though it's simplified, but, you know, you, it, the funny thing is, like, you know, the people, like those of you that use something many times or know how to use something uh, and, you know, have experience in it, the, the average person out there, you know, they don't know how what you know. <laughs> but they really don't. And, and so they are always looking for a different way. There's a lot of times, you know, I'm at events or I'm – and just you know, don't underestimate your knowledge is the real big point because, you know, I was at a – Event this, you know, and, and this happens to me all the time. It's just, you know, somebody comes up to me and asks me a question. I just look at them like, seriously? Like, you really want to know the answer to that question? Yeah, I really do. And then I go, how do you want to know the answer to this question? And everybody, I'm like, are you serious? Like, I just, you know, like to me, it was like so simple. Yeah, yeah, here's what you do. And then it's like, wow, you know, um, you know, so it's one thing to really think about what you think that everybody, just because you know it doesn't mean, I guess that's the best answer, just because you know it doesn't mean everybody else does. So, right, right. And, and I'll share this real quick. To, to, to kind of really tie this in a little bow, um, back in the 80s, uh, I, a company here in Atlanta um, uh, came to me, and we were building some marketing videos for them. And um, um, I can't believe the name escapes me here. Um, but um, their whole business was teaching Microsoft software. Um, and and I, I asked the guy who was running the company, I said, are you telling me that you're a multi-million dollar company just teaching software? And he said, yeah, because nobody will read the manual. And he said, so we build classes on how to use Outlook and uh, um, uh, Excel and Microsoft Word. That's pretty much all they taught. Um, and that company uh, was very successful and made millions just teaching software. So what happened here with the apps is the software uh, companies have started all over again, and there's and, and they don't work like they work on computers. They they work completely different. And you know you're you know it, with a computer you're using a mouse. With a with a tablet you're using the touch of your finger, and you're using um, uh, contrary motion finger motion, and you're moving things with your finger. And it's just it's a whole other concept of computer control, and it needs training. So that's a huge opportunity. So. I think what we're going to wrap up with here is uh, I'd, I'll give my thoughts on what I see the future for online video. And, Matt, you close it out with your thoughts. And I really want to thank everybody for uh, hanging in here. Hopefully we've given you more than 32 tips. But, uh, but the tip that I'm seeing, you're looking at the screen of my iPad. And those are the video apps that I use on a daily basis for my business. Um, and the future is, is I'm seeing more technology 
getting better and better and ways of communicating getting better and better. In fact, just the other day, Adobe released an app called Voice, uh, which is a video production app. And, you know, we're using Skype technology today uh, so that, you know, even though Matt and I are in the same town, it just makes it really convenient for us to do co-production uh, from the convenience of our homes. So um, I think that live video casting, there's actually a website called Livestream.com. I think Google Hangouts is going to get better and better. Uh, I think um, uh, the future online video is just going to be uh, the ability that you're going to be able to do a conference video uh, uh, from an iPad or an iPhone uh, because the Internet connections are getting faster and faster and the processors are getting faster and faster. So the, the future for online video is massive and in some ways, um, even though it's still kind of in its infancy, uh, there's so many people um, who, you know, are not the geeks that I am that, um, you know, stay, you know, get excited about these things uh, because th they don't see the value. But I'm seeing businesses of all types embracing what's possible today. And I remember a time when it was impossible. Um, you know, when you wanted to do video training or you wanted to get an advertising message to the world, it was so expensive and it was so uh, technologically uh, uh, prohibitive that that you know that small businesses and individual entrepreneurs th there was no way that you could do those things uh, Home Depot was a customer of mine years ago and they spent millions of dollars on a satellite television network so they could do Monday morning uh, hangouts essentially is what it was they were they called them Monday morning uh, um, uh, sales manager meetings and they spent millions on satellite hookups in the 80s because that was the only way you could do that all over the country. Now, for free with Google Hangouts, you can, you can meet with as many people as you want with a computer and a microphone. So the future uh, is going to not stop. That's what I see. Video online works. Uh, the younger generation does not watch tele terrestrial TV anymore. They watch Netflix, Hulu. Uh, Spotify, all these online streaming services, and, you know, the iPads and iPhones and mobile Internet devices are television. And the thing that I love and is the future for everyone is embrace the fact that no one is restricting you but yourself from participating. So for a future for you, learn to make video from these tips. Get confused, but find a mentor who can answer the questions and never give up. Uh, I plan on doing this as long as I'm able to be here. I know Matt's uh, leveraging it for his business, and the future really looks bright for online video. Matt, your closing comment. Yeah, I think, I mean, here's one thing that I'll just kind of really share with you when it comes to why I think everybody needs to be paying attention to video and getting started now, because right now, I mean, I, mean, I don't know if any of you guys have um, done any Facebook advertising, but right, but the cool thing is, and now we've got these new things when it comes to advertising, uh, which is retargeting, where you know you can identify somebody that's been to your page, and and typically what we're doing now is presenting, and this is just my my thoughts about it. Right now, if we're looking at retargeting, or we're looking at. Uh, you know things in that area where you go to a page and all of a sudden now you're seeing uh, an ad. Maybe a lot of times they're text ads, uh, a lot of times they're um, banners going back to them. But guess where I I know it's going to go to next, and it's just obvious. The next obvious move is you know just imagine you go to a page, then now instead of it being a text ad, instead of it being a banner ad, well guess what? It could be a video ad um, that that people are running. I mean, uh, video advertising I think you know is becoming more and more targeted um, to the masses, and and as the evolution of you know tablets and TV, you know, smartphones and everything else, it's really reshaping the way that consumers engage you know with video, and it's really also changing how media and the advertising companies are doing business, and with the other the things that are going on right now, like I'm saying, we're retargeting and we're really becoming more of a data driven, uh, data driven future. I mean that's I mean it's what's really going to happen is you're going to really be able to target your customer audience even better than today. With um, you know, to the people that you know, really, we were talking about. It's all about getting to your market, your niche. Well, imagine if you can, you know, kind of 
push your videos straight to them instead of having them find you. But you find, I mean, they, you just, you know, get in front of them and make things happen. I think it's really going to be huge, um, you know, thing for people to do. And like you're talking about, people watching the video of the internet is getting bigger. Um, you know, the, you know, traditional TV is still around, but you know what? Um, people watching videos over the internet, but I think even more with the advertising is going to be um, one of the big things to get ready for. Um, you know, in there. I mean, imagine, um, you know, even imagine even deeper inside it. I mean, heck, you know, what happens if the, because one thing to take in consideration, even TV channels right now, like, you know, you're talking about more people watching, I mean, starting to watch online. Well, the people that have the TV channels, they're going to have to do something. And the way they're probably going to open it up is through advertising. And I guarantee you, guess what? I mean, it just makes sense to have a video to video match or, you know, being able to, uh, present your stuff because you could be advertising. Uh, probably, I guarantee you, think you know just because of uh, things right now, you could probably be advertising on the internet. So it's time is now to get in, get in, you know, get doing video. And I guarantee you, um, I think there's a lot of more disruptions in the in the marketplace that are going to happen uh, to kind of really uh, make things happen and, and, and for video advertising specifically. And I think it's going to grow massively. Um, it's going to become an even big growing market. Um, you know, a growing thing, and you know, it's going to be driving. You know, the, it's it's going to be driving the evolution of video. video. Oh, absolutely. I probably said absolutely too much, but I'm emphatic about that. Uh, this this has been so much fun, Matt. And uh, you know, I know we could could talk a whole lot longer, but I, I'm sure that there there comes a point where we have to say uh, goodbye and 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 so long and till next time. But um, I, w I want to thank you for being the inspiration to do this uh, review, and I hope people have gotten a lot of good from it, and I hope our paths cross again. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, Mike, and, and thanks for all of you.